Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today I'm going to be reviewing Prohibition Monty by Alan Rorison. Before I do that, listen, it's your life. I can't tell you what to do. But what I'd really like for you to do is to like and subscribe, check out cardmagiccourse.com. That's my online card magic course. It's brilliant. Over 400 videos and all that. Have a look at, read the testimonials. Don't take my word for it. I'm very biased. Um, so have a look at that. That would be lovely because that makes all this happen. Without that, there is no this. And if you like this, you'll like that. See? Uh, right. So do all that stuff and we'll get on with it. This is, um, this took me a while because I, uh, was really wanted to get some footage of performing it, and I did get some. It's not great because uh, I had to practice this quite a lot, which is weird. Cause it's not very difficult, but we'll talk about that in a sec. So this is the latest from Alan Morrison and the 1914. Well, I say it's a latest from the 1914, saying that it was when I first got it. Probably isn't now, uh, but that doesn't matter, does it? Because this stuff is ageless. That's the point. You know, we don't always have to go for the brand new. And this reminded me of, uh, well, it's a two-card Monty routine, so it reminded me of lots of two-card Monty routines, which is a very good thing. So I'm a big fan of uh, the, the simplicity of plot with that, you know, the idea of those two cards, which is always lovely, isn't it? One in your pocket, or whatever, the, Ga the Garrett Thomas one, stand-up Monty's great, uh, and they always play really well. So you've got a trick here that you know is going to play well, and it's unique because it uses half cards, and Alan's got a lovely... Uh, presentation on this to completely justify the use of half, half cards talking about the prohibition which is uh, the prohibition of the title uh, and why you would have half cards and it makes sense and it is based on fact and it's great and and he's he's very good at uh, sort of facts and crediting and things like that's got some great crediting on this going back to I think going back to 1913 the um the the, the idea of the stand-up Monty, and, he, and he, he goes right back and gives you all that history, which I really, really like. In a download that isn't five hours long, which is nice, yes, he packs in a lot, he's very concise, and you know, it's great for me not to have to sit and watch a massive long download full of filler uh, for this trick, and it's not needed because the trick stands up itself. So the if you don't know it, basically you have two half cards, if you haven't seen the trailer, I'm not going to show it all here, um, but you, you have two half cards and you just have this game of uh, one of the half cards goes in your pocket and it basically switches places with the other one. Uh, and the good thing is it doesn't do that 55 times. It does it once or twice and then you work towards this finale, which again, I really, really like. The, you know, Some of these routines do feel like they've got to have loads and loads of phases and it feels like it's got a real beginning, middle and an end, which is nice. And it's got this kicker finish, which nobody is expecting, which is the point, really, because as he says, a lot of these two-card Monty or three-card Monty routines don't have a good ending. Some of them do. A lot of them do, of course. There's the bent corner thing with the three-card Monty. And, of course, there's gags and ways of finishing and finales and things happening in their hands and all that. But this has this really nice, completely unexpected thing, which is kind of like Anniversary Waltz, where you have the two halves of the card fused together. Nothing in my pocket, right? It's basically, I'm not going to go into the detail, but it goes back to prison, basically, where you couldn't carry decks of cards, so they tried to make games with single cards, and then tiny cards, they could hide them. And it's kind of got like gambling games, but really, really simple gambling games. So this is a trick with half cards. All right, so the idea is there's, there's half okay. cards there. And what's going to happen is I'm going to go in here, bring the card back out, and you're going to tell me what card I've put in my pocket. Right. All right, so just go with, so don't, don't keep your eye on the, on the two, okay? The key is to keep your eye on the queen. Right. All right, uh, so if I put the queen in there, yeah. uh, which one did I put in my pocket? The queen. Absolutely, okay, but there's the <laughs> two, right? So, so put, your, put your name or initials on that. All right? Done. And then what I might do then is say, right, I'm going to put that in there. And which one did I put? The queen. Okay, but then you've got the two there. <laughs> put your name on that one. I'm confused. All right. <laughs> So you've, you've signed two bits now. Yes. So put the pen down. And what's going to happen, we'll, um, we'll put your hand out like this and put your, other hand, put your other hand on top, okay? And put that there. And if I was to say, which one did I put in there? Actually, which one have I put in my pocket? Or did I take one at all? You didn't take one. You put both in my hand. Did I? Yeah. But you've only got one in your hand, right? No, I've got two. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> this, uh, but this is why, you see. So if I was to get busted now, I haven't got a half card. Because that would be suspicious, right? I haven't yeah. carried half bars and I want to get you in trouble and I can walk away clean. 
So if you take your, your hand off and see what you've got, I'd say, look, this, you had the one card, the, the whole thing. Oh, can... Great. That was amazing. Um, and again, the lovely thing about it, it completely ends up somewhere that they're not expecting because they've got their mind on this game, uh, which I really like. And he, again, justifies that, it, you know, there's a reason why they'd be stuck together at the end. And I think that's, for some people, that is going to be important. It does feel like, it, why would they be stuck together at the end? But we have got to remember as well, the, the pointlessness of it may be the thing that works really strongly as well. And I would go back again and again to, why would there be oranges under the cups? Um, because there's oranges under the cups. That's what the trick is, because it's ridiculous, and that's why we like it. And I think that, as Alan says, he, he recommends you do his script or a version of it. He also says come up with your own you know, stuff, but, but I think it... For some people, that's going to be really important. For me, actually, I couldn't make that play. It didn't really suit me, and I think it was because I was doing it very badly. Again, I learned this stuff really quickly, and I think with scripts, you've really got to have them down, even if it's a simple script. And in the performance I filmed, which I'm not going to show you all of, because I was just rambling nonsense. <laughs> just made no sense at all. Uh, and the reason was, is because I find these routines, even though this has only got like three phases, or you can just, you can improvise around this and add as many phases as you want, really. But I always struggle to remember. I remember with Garrett Torres stand up, I just couldn't remember the process. It took me a lot of performances until I found, felt comfortable with it and a bit the cups and balls really. My brain just finds it hard to know where I am with, with, with phases of tricks that feel similar to perform. They don't necessarily feel similar to watch but to perform. So I actually found this quite hard to remember even though there was a little bit of it. it it's ridiculous and it's me. It's not a criticism of the product at all. So when I was trying to remember my script I was going, what bit are we at? Uh, so, you know, if you're like me, you may find that, but that's fine because it just means you've got to work it in a bit, which, which we should do with our tricks anyway. And I think for some of you like me, I think it, it does feel okay just to do the trick and not really explain stuff. It, it, it does feel weird because why are we doing it? But we just, let's have a little game, all right? We'll have a little game. We'll do a little gambling demonstration. And I came up with this idea of actually saying, talking about prisons, about, you know, easy to get caught if you're carrying a deck of cards. But if you're only carrying two half cards, you can conceal that. So I think you can find reasons for it. But I, again, I think it's going to play fine just with that ending and go, you know, you've got two cards in your hand. doesn't make much sense, but it's still a very strong ending. So it, it's a really strong trick. It's a really good trick. Um, it's really novel, it's unique, it's easy to carry around and like he said if you've got one of the shadow wallets, you don't need one obviously, you can stick it in any wallet but it does, it's something else you can put in a tiny little wallet and then you've got this kind of act um, in one wallet which you can have again in your normal wallet but it does sort of slide in there quite nicely uh, and looks very cool and there's a moment where, where they see the top of the cards poking out of the wallet in any wallet um, and they think it's a card and you pull it out and it's a half card and there's a nice sort of unique moment there. So I think it's a good trick, it is easy, it's not difficult uh, you are going to be able to do it. There isn't many people that aren't going to be able to do it. There's no real sleight of hand in this. It is bold. I will say that. It feels... Because this, when you show the cards, the half cards, you do have to be a little bit careful with hand, handling and, and, and your angles. It's not an angly trick, but just the, 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 the way you tilt the cards and hold the cards, you have to be mindful of. So that's what's going to take the rehearsal. You are going to have to rehearse this and rehearse how you take that card in and out of your pocket, put it in your pocket, make sure it's smooth. All that stuff that we should be doing anyway... So it's not like read it or you know, watch the download, I mean, or just go out and perform it. And uh, as with the 1914, really nicely presented, you know, I'm going to cover up the download uh, instructions there, but it comes with, with this. And importantly, um, you get 20, you can give away the card at the end. So you get like 22 or 20, around about 20, 25 of those cards to give away, but you don't have to. It's still really strong if you don't, but you can get them to sign it. If you get them to sign it, it's a nice giveaway. Uh, if you're going to do loads of tables, like Alan says, you don't have to give it away. It's just a strong trick and people won't be going, why haven't I got that card? But, you know, it, it, you've done the trick and it, the cards are fused together. It's a great trick. But if you want to give it away, you're going to be able to buy refills and you get five, I think, of the cards that you don't have to give away, which is going to last you forever, the cards that you tear. Um, so I shouldn't worry about that either. So I think there's plenty there. I've got no problem with that, but worth knowing. So there it is. Lovely trick that. Really like it. And... Um, Please use the links below. Thank you to the 1914 for sending it to me. And I look forward to what they've got coming up. Uh, please do like and subscribe. Check out... I can't tell you what to do. It's your life. But check out cardmagiccourse.com. Thanks very much. Have a great one. See you soon. Bye.